I have a huge amount of love and respect for Clarins. If you've been following me for more than a day, you will know that I have a long history with this brilliant French brand. I first used them in my 20s. I worked for them in my 30s. And now... I'm telling you about their brilliant new version of the iconic double serum. Unbelievably, now in its ninth generation and undoubtedly regaining its cult status, it is quite frankly a sensational upgrade. Rooted firmly in the performance Clarence is known for, double serum now targets signs of aging linked to lifestyle. Think pollution, blue light, sun damage and UV with five new actives and a potent Provencal reed extract that tackle this head on. I love the Lux texture, the elevated peptide and squalane formula and the pack's innovative new dosage pump. Use daily as your treatment step. The results in four weeks are impressive. After five years of research and six patents to reach this version, it's absolutely been worth the wait. The Clarins crown is firmly back in position. Strap yourselves in, people. I'm going on tour for the first time ever, and I'm so here for it, bringing our wild and wonderful Glad We Had This Chat podcast to a venue near you, promising you an unforgettable night of unbridled honesty, unfiltered opinions, F-bombs, and fearlessness. Come join me and a stellar lineup of special guests as we talk all things skincare and beauty, along with frank discussions about life's adventures, challenges, highlights, and joys with exclusive on-stage skincare demos, entertaining Q&As, and a healthy dose of unscripted hilarity. This is Caroline Hirons, me, live, and apparently on steroids. It's happening. Get your tickets now at carolinehirons.com and secure your spot. Welcome back to Glad We Had This Chat. It's listeners' questions with the queen of Milton Keynes. <laughs> It's Candice Brathwaite. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Milton Keynes. <laughs> Listener's cues. <sighs> okay. Yeah. Um, let's, let's start with a big one. What advice would you give young women who aren't from stereotypically white middle class backgrounds who want to pursue a career in writing and don't know where to start? Learn to write commercially, not artistically. Oh, that's so good. Yeah. You know why? Because yeah. it's taken me too fucking long to work that out. <laughs> I can appreciate, especially when you're not from a certain background, so much is pinned on how poetic you can be and how deep and moving the book. You want a book that's going to fucking shift units and change your life. Yeah. Yeah. Be poetic down the line. Mm. Like do that as a a bit of fun and bants between you and your friends. Learn how to write commercially. As someone now approaching book five, who's only now got the support to ensure what that looks like, that's what I will lead with. Because to write alone, I've not yet cashed that kind of check. I know they exist and I know mine's coming. But to write alone is to live a pauper's life. Mm. If that's your only fucking job, yeah. it's not, not everyone is fucking, I don't know what her name is, Sally Rooney in it. Do you know what I mean? Mm. 95% of books are just paying someone's bills within that huge publishing yeah. cog. They're yeah. not changing the game. You want to be able to change your life and narrative first and then do all that other artistic shit. Do all shit the artistic shit later. Later. Write for money. Get a really shit hot literary agent. Don't go with the th- first person that is like... Just blow smoke up your ass. Yeah, oh, I really like... Mm. No, what have you done? Yeah. Who have you made a literary superstar? Mm. Get someone who's got the CV. Yeah, that's what I would say. Sorry, I, I know you wanted something a bit softer, but I've got to... <laughs> got to keep it real. That's, <laughs> it's no fairy tale. No, life ain't a Disney movie. Like... Right, I'm quite embarrassed as I'm typing this, but mm. my dilemma is that I feel excluded by the other school mums. Oh. They all seem to be good friends, and I know they have playdates together, which me and my daughter are never invited to. I do try to speak to them, but I'm usually greeted with a cold shoulder. I know I shouldn't care, but it's starting to get me down. Mm. I think you should care. I would care. I think you should care, but also I I cannot bear to beg to be in a club. No. No. It's just not my vibe. Go where you're celebrated, not tolerated. Yeah, Uh, But I do think you should honour that that doesn't feel nice. Mm. But more to the point, I want you to think about when I'm doing a hard thing, I'm not Candice Brathwaite and I'm Esme and RJ's mum. Mm-hmm. She's going to get the job overdone. Mm-hmm. Candice, not sure. Mm. I want you to think of yourself as your daughter's mother. Why would you put your kid in a situation mm-hmm. where she's tolerated? Fuck you. Yeah. Because that one's a bit debatable. Yeah. When you ramp it up to your kid, it makes you go. It makes a different I would thought never process do that. come to your head. Yeah. 
I w- your tribe is out there. They say, no, nah, sorry. Yeah. And also, if you're feeling like that, what's your poor kid feeling exactly. like? Exactly. Take the lead. Yeah. Find, she'll find other friends. You need to find another clique. Ignore them. Yeah. I recently discovered that my husband has been hiding some... Oh, OK, I was going to say, what's he hiding? <laughs> some pretty big debts from me. Ooh. He says he didn't want to tell me and stress me out, but I can't help feeling hurt. I'm not sure if I'm overreacting. Is this a big deal? It's a huge deal. That's Grace in Bournemouth. Grace, that is a huge deal. I think it's a huge deal, but I also think it depends on how he got them. Is it gambling yeah. debts? Is it prostitution debts? <laughs> you know, <laughs> if he just made that a bad move, is, if he's just <laughs> buying things on a credit card for you, that's a different thing. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, you're going to have to fix it. You're going to have to get the money somehow anyway. And also, um, once you've worked out how the debts were accrued, because that will change the storyline dramatically... Mm. If it's not earth shattering to your marriage, I think we all need to take a pause and really understand how hard it can be to be upfront about our financial yeah. situations, especially quote unquote as the man. Yep. There's still that energy around breadwinner, about having it all together. And some men really struggling to say, I don't have this. Yeah. I don't have us. I'm not quite sure yeah. how we're going to do this. That's the way society views it. Yeah. So like, Dependent upon how we got into the debt, I would say, take a breath, take a breath. And I understand that you're hurt, but his shame trumped the idea of your hurt. Mm. And that's why this has happened. Unless it was prostitutes, in which case, babe, get a lawyer. Babe, and an STD test. Yeah. (laughs) I'm glad we left that on a high. (laughs) I'm a mother of two with a very demanding job that means working long hours and rarely get involved in my kids' school activities recently my youngest got upset and asked why i never come to school trips like the other mums and i've been feeling guilty ever since i don't want to miss out on important meetings but i struggle to find the time with my work commitments is there anything i can do to feel more connected to my children without compromising my career or do i need to give up my job altogether fuck no no why is it so hard to be a working mum in today's society because we're we're told you can have it all and you can't have it all but you can do it all yeah you will do it all if you want it all you will end up doing it all yeah I don't do guilt, I'm sorry. I don't do guilt. Also, do you know what I've become really frank at with my kids? Showing them the physical thing that comes out of me working. Yeah. Do you like this Nintendo? Mm Mm-hmm. Well, I do have to leave That's where I was. I do have to. I think sometimes actually just ripping that veil from your kids' eyes and being like, this is the output of the input of me going to work. Mm -hmm. What can we do on the weekends? What can we do on a Sunday? What can we do on my day off? But unfortunately, I can't do that because I'm doing this. Mm. I think you've just got to be so blunt with my kids. Uh, My big thing is, right, life doesn't come with a trigger warning. (sighs) So the trigger warning thing you see everywhere, like... I think it's detrimental to the young people of the today because they want a trigger warning about everything. everything. I was trying to play Everybody Loves Raymond this morning and it said dated, dated humour. And I thought, oh, oh Jesus Christ, it's Everybody Loves Raymond. Uh, like... Don't you, judge me by watching that. I'll just, it's my wallpaper. Do you know what I mean? But life doesn't come with a trigger warning and you have to tell your kids yeah. the truth. Yeah. You know, if we were in money worries, we'd be like, well, we can't afford it. Oh, we just can't afford it. That, so, you that, know, Ava wanted to do netball. And I said, well, we can't afford for you to do it because yeah. I can't, one, I can't be there every weekend. We don't have a car. I can't drive you to all the games. Yeah. We just can't afford for you to do it, babe. Yeah. And she's like, okay, cool. Fair. Yeah. You know. And I'm, I've been, this is the, this has been our year of we can't afford it because we've changed tack and everyone's just taking it very well. Mm. Like, oh, all right then. Yeah. And again, for my kids who are so flipping privileged in comparison to me, this is me providing a little bit of friction. Mm. You can't, you yeah. can't have it right now. I'm not saying never. Yeah. It's just not happening right now. Yeah. yeah. I always say, you know, if I've got it, you can have it. Unless it's ridiculous. Yeah. If I haven't got it, you can't have it. Exactly. So if you're going to roll with me and want to roll with me when I can afford to go out and buy you nice things, you need to know that sometimes I'll be going, wind your neck in. It's a yeah. tight, it's a HMLC month, love. You've got no chance. <laughs> it's VAT month, babe. Take a deep breath. You're lucky we're getting beans. <laughs> So basically, Fran, we're saying don't do guilt. Just tell your yeah. kids you've got to work. Yeah. Ask them if they enjoy being warm and being fed. And, and also, Fran, think, have a meditation on if it's your guilt or their guilt. Yeah. Because if it's your guilt, maybe you do want to like take a day off and yeah. do the whole thing. But make sure they want to do something with you. They may not want to do Sometimes something with you. Sometimes they just want you th- They, they want to do you there. their thing with you there. They just want you there. Print a six-foot pop-up. I, I still... <laughs> 
and my brother and I still, the, one of the weirdest things with losing mum was not being able to call her and her just picking up the phone, yeah. which a lot of people say, they're like, oh, I'm going to call my mum. Yeah. But even the joke is she would, she would only either be at home or at Sandra's across the road, right? Yeah. So if she wasn't in, we'd call Sandra's <laughs> and go, and it would be her husband, like, all right, duck. I'd go, oh, is mum there? And he'd go, oh, she is, love. Yeah, hang on. She'd come on the phone. She'd go, I'll be home in 10 minutes. I'm like, well, what, just, what are you doing? This is when I'm 50. But my kids now do it to me. Where are you? Ava, where are you? And I'm literally, because she can see I'm in the office. I'm like, the fuck, I'm working. What? <laughs> oh, when are you going to be home? I'm like, you yeah, haven't lived with me for years. Call, we're like, what? Yeah, literally. So I think the kids might just want you to be, be around. Yeah. yeah. Just be around. Yeah. Even if it, it really is to irritate them a lot of the time. Yeah. Right. My partner and I just got engaged and are planning to get married next year. Hmm. I've been feeling really stressed out about sending out invites. So as I don't want to invite his cousins, they're incredibly argumentative and have caused tension in our relationship in the past. While I understand that family is important, I'm so anxious about what our wedding day could turn into. <gasps> I haven't told my fiance my feelings yet. Am I wrong to suggest not inviting them or do I have to grin and bear it as they are family? Oh, no, you do babe, not grin and bear it. Not. You don't you do- grin and bear anything on, on your wedding your day. Wedding day. <laughs> No, 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 no. No. I know people might not know what this means, but I'm married to a Nigerian man and only had 25 people at my wedding. That's Whoa. like no one. That's no one. You got married with just one person. Lit- literally, on a Tuesday night, and told everyone to fuck off by 11. Mwah. Perfect. It was, I saw that and I was like, that's just absolute genius. <laughs> like, absolute genius. Not on your wedding day. No. No way. And... Well, I don't want to preempt it, but your fiance's reaction it's is going to point towards if he's going to be your husband. Yeah, because it's a red flag. Yeah. If he says, no, they've got to come, then that's what you're going to be putting up with for the rest of marriage. Yeah. No, it's your wedding day. You get the say. Absolutely. And it's and it's not even like it's a mother-in-law. Cousins? Give me Cousins, a break. behave yourself. <laughs> Cousins, they can all fuck off. <laughs> There are a few things in life that just keep on giving for $3.99 a month. A floppy fuel station sarnie, one small cup of bougie overpriced coffee. I don't think so. Or for the same price, you could be getting a month's worth of skincare insights and know-how from yours truly. A wealth of fresh, expertly written articles on all things skincare and beauty. From our free to download version for essential educational content to our elevated premium experience, the Skinrocks app will revolutionize how you shop and learn about skincare. Whether you're a novice building your first routine, an aficionado wanting deep scientific expertise, or someone looking for the inside scoop on beauty newness, it's all in one pocket-friendly place on the Skinrocks app. With simple-to-use functions that let you filter for your personal profile, save your favourite content and explore a vast product library with ease, it's no wonder it's called the Google of skincare. Unlock a world of incredible premium content for just $3.99 a month, $34.99 a year, or get a special discount via the podcast with code CHPOD to get £10 off your annual subscription. I'm worried about the impact of social media on my mental health. Well, listen to our podcast. I find myself constantly comparing my life to other people and it's starting to get me down. How can I create a healthier relationship with it? you got to do, you got to detox first. Yeah. I wouldn't even say take time. You've got to completely detox. Yeah. Let's start with a week, move to a month, just take it out. And it's so habitual. Yeah. It's the first thing we reach for. And when I started clocking that, I was like, right, so you're going to wait to have your first coffee. You're going to wait to have mm-hmm. your first meeting and just keep pushing it back and back and back. And it's all, it's all to some degree pretend. Yeah. Even, my pages are extremely curated. Mm. They have to be. It's the only way I feel like I can protect myself and have boundaries. Yeah. I'm not showing you the highest of the high, nor am I showing you the lowest of no. the low. So you're even getting pent up about people's lives that have been really edited, really cut down to make you think or, or that see. That's what you should have. Yeah. No. It's, none of it's real. It's not and real. And you know what? The people who are real online are the ones who do really well authentically. So like you're like Stacey Solomon uh, is so real. Like, she, you know, if she's not feeling it, she just doesn't post. And yeah. she'll come and she goes, sorry, guys. Same. I wasn't feeling it. Same. <laughs> you know? Like I don't, I, I no longer force it in that way because actually as bad as it was for me, it's bad for my audience for me to constantly pretend that I'm okay or this is. Mm. Also, someone messaged me ages ago when I used to read my messages. Someone was like, oh, it's so commendable that you post videos of you working out and sweating. 
I was like, well, what the fuck else do you do when you work out? What? Yeah, I'm not going to towel down before I... Sh- do you know what I found really hard with social media and that's made me step back in terms of comments and people, I know they mean well. Yeah. It's when people say, people who don't know me, yeah. don't, don't know my mum and they'll go, your mum's so proud of you. Ooh. And God help me, it makes me want to go, fuck you. Yeah. It really does because yeah. you don't know my mum and I know you mean well yeah. and you're probably just being clumsy. Yeah. But I'm not big on saying proud anyway. Mm. I don't really say it to my kids. Yeah. Because it feels when I say it, if I say it about my kids, the way in my head it works is if I say I'm so proud of you, I'm taking from you. Yeah. I'm making your success about me. Yeah. I'm relating your success to something I've done. Yeah. And I know that makes may sound weird because when people say I'm so proud of you, I'm like, you don't even fucking know me. Yeah. And it's weird to me. Like when my mum said it, mm. ironically, as I was older, she didn't say she, but I knew she was because she yes. would just look at me. Yeah. She'd look at me like the world would end if I wasn't mm. there. Right. And that's the difference. Mm. You know, like Toni Morrison saying, does your face light up when your child walks in the room? Yeah. That was life changing for me. Yeah. Life changing. I had two kids when I heard her say that. And ever since then, the grandchildren must think I've got, I could never have Botox because <laughs> I'm like, babies, <laughs> you know, it's like, but I, I've always felt like when someone says, oh, I'm so proud, your mum would be so proud of you. I'm like, you don't know my mum from Adam. Yeah. It's not your place to say that. Yeah. But that's the weird thing about social media. God. People think they know you they well know enough you. to say, but my friends wouldn't say that to me yeah. because we all know, I know. Like, I remember Lorna Luff, who's Judy Garland's daughter, yeah. talking on a documentary years ago, and she said the weirdest thing for her was being like a young woman and complete strangers coming up to her in the street and going, I'm so sorry your mum died. So she, they thought they were being not nice, and she said she was young enough to go, oh, you're sorry. <laughs> right? Because yeah. she was just like, fuck off. Yeah. She was my yeah. mum. Let me have her in death. I didn't yeah. have her in life. Quite a few people have sent me that. So if you did, I don't. I don't. Yet, I don't wish you any harm. Like it's, so, I, I take it for how you mean it, but it's weird. The woman that you are and the brand that you've built for people to rock with you this long, you must understand that. Like Caroline is the queen of context. Candice is the queen. Of, do you know what I mean? I'm not saying, oh my god, I fucking hate you. It's just that we actually don't know each other. We don't. Know and it each feels other. a little too personal. It's a little too personal. Like we stopped posting anything to do with the babies. Yeah. Because we were on certain sites and they were trolled yeah. and there was pictures of them and I had, we had to get lawyers involved, yeah. cease and desists involved. Again, f- do what you want with my face, oh. not, the, not the key. But also it's illegal, which is really handy because those pictures fucking came oh, down. You can't good. post people without, yeah. the, without the parents' yeah. permission. So, and also, like I say, I've got a reassuringly expensive lawyer. <laughs> um, so we just don't post the babies. Yeah. So people don't even know their, like some of Good. don't know their names. We've never mentioned the young ones. Yeah. But people are like, oh, how many have you got? And I'm like, yeah, I've got grandkids. Yeah. Just to keep it vague. Yeah. Because they didn't sign up for this. You know At me. All. And the way that you think you know me, I'd, I'd be horrified if anything ever came onto them because of something I'm doing. Yes. You know? Yes. So I think if it's getting you down, you probably need to put the phone down. Put and, the phone yeah. down. Right. It's time for fun. Okay. Okay, are you ready? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Boots are super drug. Boots. Oh, bold eye or bold lip? As bold if lip. I don't know. Bold I don't know. I have that fucking stupid question. <laughs> Dewy or matte skin? Matte, dead, in, deceased, fucking what? in the grave, no shine. What? Bus club, another club, Fenty Invisimat. Okay, in my wait. Veins. Did you have problematic skin when you were younger? Yeah. That's why. <laughs> That's why, because I was dry. <laughs> So I am just like, I want to look like I've just walked through a fucking shower. Absolutely not. Yeah. Glow, I want to I want to see me from fucking space. <laughs> because I, my line used to be, I've got plenty of time to look matte when I'm dead. So that fits perfectly. Yeah. Okay. Full glam or soft glam? What the fuck is soft glam? That, as a writer, what the fuck is okay, a soft... Okay, I didn't write this. <laughs> I, think, <laughs> I think soft glam is like you today. No, baby, this is all concealer, contour. Yeah, but blush. soft glam, you're done up, but you're not in a ball gown. Full glam for me is oh, when you are going out. Oh, but see, I'm relating soft glam just to face. No, I mean glam. Oh, okay. Full glam. Full glam. <laughs> it's quite stressful, actually. <laughs> Cream cleanser or gel cleanser? Gel, 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 gel. I mean, if only she was emphatic about it. <laughs> AM routine or PM routine? PM routine. A, the only thing important to me in the AM is sunscreen. We can dib and dab. But PM, that's the wind down. Yeah, PM, PM. Space and chaos, Sephora. Sephora? Makeup brush or makeup sponge? 
brush. You d- I can't be doing with this. Yeah. I'm too brush. old. Well, when, like, did this, yeah. when did the sponge come into it? You're yeah. not a makeup artist. Put it down. Brush. Lipstick or lip gloss? Stick, stick. <laughs> I'm getting angry. I know. I love it. <laughs> shopping online or shopping in person? I'm getting older in person. Mm. I'm, I've got to get in that fitting room. I need yeah. good lighting. Yeah. I'm now the woman walking out like with just her bra in the big mirror. <laughs> so I'm coming out the cubicle. <laughs> Mate, I'm out of it. I need the big mirror. What is this little mirror? <laughs> Yeah, in person. And I want to see it all behind me. All behind. Don't make it hard for me. Give right, me the 360 mirror. Yeah, mirror. give me a 360 yeah. mirror. The Americans do that yeah. really well. <gasps> Changing rooms in department stores in New York are the, the best. <sighs> With a platform, you step up onto the platform Huge. and you're like, wow, I'm looks like I'm on the TV. <laughs> and this shirt does not look good. <laughs> city break or country escape? City break. Mm. City break. Sweet or savoury? Sweet. Sweet. Heels or flats? I'm 4'11 and a half. That's the Same first time all. I've ever said my height online, guys. <gasps> Breaking news. Breaking news. Always a heel, apart from today. <laughs> well, they got a bit of a wedge, too. Yeah, I need, yeah. Night in or night out? In, in. In. So far what in. What the hell is out? Night out for me was like the oh. 80s. Coffee or tea? Coffee. Really? Matcha. No. I know. Really? Yeah, you know, oh God, I hate to be boring. But matcha releases the caffeine slowly, so you don't get the the cliff effect. But I don't like matcha. I know. Try it with coconut milk. Oh, I fuck know. that, no. <laughs> Absolutely not. Next, you'll be telling me what fucking protein bar you're making. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Nando's or Wagamama? Nando's! I don't know what Jenny is, but my daughter's 10, and she is a Wagga fanatic. Yeah. And I went there, and I was like, this is just water with salt in it. This is... <laughs> All right, so we'll go one step further. What's your Nando's order? Uh, Quarter chicken, hot or even very hot. Thanks, Bonnie, for teaching me how to handle that. Mm -hmm. Fries. And they've got a new salad, a Portuguese tomato salad. Stunning. And then their chocolate cake. You can tell I love a Nando's, yeah. 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 (laughs) What's your McDonald's order? Nothing. To my PT, nothing. Don't know what a Mackey D's is. But to me, what's your McDonald's order? Six nuggets. Right. Fries. (laughs) And then maybe a little, a little fillet of fish on the sides. Okay. People don't understand this. I'm a fillet of fish chaser. I do a quarter pounder of cheese with a fillet of fish yes, chaser. And like... I dump the fries because they're more calories. Yeah, the fi- a little fillet of fish, a little on the fillet fish on the side. Yeah. Tidy. Okay, and this is the final question. It's very important. We need to take it very seriously. Okay, okay. They know what's coming. What the fuck? What's your favourite sandwich? My favourite sandwich? Yeah. Is this is this a sexual innuendo? Why are you not laughing? No, because we ask everyone and it leads to this massive discussion about food. It's just a real... I'm not talking sexual. Sandwich. And let's pretend the gluten thing isn't an issue. Okay. It's a, it's a cheese and tomato baguette. <laughs> it's a bit fucking boring, isn't it? A cheese and tomato baguette. I know. It used to be a BLT. Right. But I've just kind of gone off them. So what kind of cheese and tomato baguette? The one from Pret, I don't know. Fine. Yeah. I'm just not a big sandwich girl. How is that possible? I Everyone don't know. loves a sandwich. Do they? See? You don't see. Is it a black thing? <laughs> <laughs> rice and stew, like I don't. <laughs> All right, rice and stew, fine. God. <laughs> Fair. Fair. All right. What's your favourite food? In the world? Yes. What's your favourite black food? Planting. As you brought it up. Planting. And not plantain, because mm. you know there's that fucking argument there. I would never you argue climb with a you, mountain, babe. not a mountain. Got it. So it's planting. Yeah. I like it fried, roasted in a Saturday soup. I'll eat the fucking shit raw. Planting. Now we're getting the passion I was after. <laughs> you can tell we've asked some boring white people, haven't you? Because we get all excited about the sandwich and she's like, cheese and tomato, I don't understand. <laughs> yeah, now she's like, planting. <laughs> You, I have to say, you and your mate in Jamaica. Wasn't that the best? I, I've never had so much fun from not being there. <laughs> Wasn't that on the just beach, the best shit ever? On the beach. On the curbside at 4am in the morning. Yeah. And like, if, if women can do anything, go away with your best mate. Yeah. Go away with... Do you know what it looked like to me? And I say this, you know I, that I would say this with the utmost respect, but the internet might not. You look like a woman fully enjoying her blackness. Boom. Boom. 
Yeah. It felt so good to just look out everywhere and see myself. That that trip, that was also the trip though, sorry to carry it away, mm. that my paternal granddad rejected me on. So oh. like I went to find him and the godfather I was using as the mouthpiece basically reported that he never wants to see me again as long as I'm alive. So, and we started the holiday that way, Shit. you know, we went with all this anxiety. It's not the, re it's not the sole reason I went, yeah. but we went with all this anxiety about me possibly reconnecting with my dad's dad and da, 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 da. And so the first two days were like mourning grief wow. because I was just so in the ground. Yeah. I was like, and I'm his rejection only grandchild. At your age as well. Yeah, like rejection I was like, again. but then... For Jamaica as a whole to carry me the way it did, yeah. I was like, oh, family's not a person, it's a place. Yeah. It's a feeling. Yeah. And my best mate said to me, a person can reject you, your country will never. And it has made mm. us decide that we're going to get a retirement, a retirement home for the both of us there, just like as a girly pad. Wow. Because that, that trip just filled me up to the brim. Oh, it came across. Oh. Your Insta was hysterical. <laughs> Not the granddad bit. <laughs> Fuck him. <laughs> oh. I'll have a word. But but it was such a... I was just like, look at you. You look glorious. And also, I want, not that that was the job, because none of it was a job, but I was like, fuck this idea that Jamaica's scary mm. and you've got to be careful. Yeah, you need a hotel for somewhere to sleep, but get the fuck off the resort. Yeah. That's not Jamaica. Yeah. It's, there's nothing to be afraid of. You've got to get in a fucking taxi where you're sitting on a stranger's lap. Yeah. Trust me, ha that's Jamaica, yeah. you know? Yeah. But yeah. Anyway. Well, um... <laughs> I'm not sure if that's what they were looking for, but <laughs> we're going to go to Jamaica. We're going to eat plantains. Plantain. Plantain. Yeah, T-I-N. Yeah, tin. plantains. Yeah. And uh, we are definitely not having a wagon mama. Ugh, yuck. Yuck. <laughs> there goes that sponsorship. Yuck. Oh, I mean, they've been breaking down the door. Candice, thank you. And thank you to everyone who sent us questions. Yeah, no, thank you. This has been... Guess what, guys? I'm glad we had this chat. I'm so glad we had this chat. <laughs> On brand. Boom. That's the first time anyone said that. And that's a wrap for this week. Thanks for listening. I'm back on Monday with a new guest, so make sure you tune in. Until then, I'm glad we had this chat. New episodes are available every Monday and Wednesday. Follow or subscribe now on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Glad we had this chat is produced by Wall to Wall Media.